Hello everybody, Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay, triple feature video at me. Okay, this is the uh, first entry for Charlie Max Anniversary Pearl Harbor Group Build. This is my Kitty Hawk 132nd scale OS2U Kingfisher. Okay, I got a lot done this thing. I posted the last video on me. It's not easy. It's not an easy kit. I will not suggest a novice to even try to build this thing. This thing is very, uh, there's lots and lots and lots, did I say a lot, of small, minute, tiny parts that make it the material. There's nothing that they didn't leave out in this thing. It too, like to me, uh, it's, it's, they did their homework on this thing. Okay, we're going to take a look at this thing. OS 2U Kingfisher came out in 1937. Actually, no, actually, they came out later than that. They came out by 1940. A lot of battleships are using them. The same thing with cruisers. The SOC 3 Curtis uh, biplane, uh, seagulls, they call them. They become obsolete because they're biplanes, and they had and the Bureau of Naval Op of Aeronautics had great demand for a monoplane, so this seemed to fill the bill. This here was designed and built by Chance Spot Aircraft Company in conjunction with Consolidated Air Aircraft Company out of San Diego, California, and uh, this actually was the mainstay in all battleships and cruisers in 1944, is when the Martin Seahawk came out. And these, they've retired these things, and uh, I don't think these any things flyable today. I, I don't think. I don't know. They probably are. And, uh, I heard no reports at all that these things had problems. They they did the job quite well. They were designed for. Okay. This kit goes together very well. Like I say, I would not suggest, or even try to suggest, a novice to work on this thing, to build one of these things, because it can run a lot of problems, a lot of parts, a lot of small parts. And the fitting of the fuselage, the fitting of the wings and everything, everything's got to be drilled out and stuff. This is actually an expert model, made for the guy who knows what to do. And uh, believe you me, I was pretty much lost in this thing. And, you had to open up the fuselage and from the inside for, to accept the, the center pontoon. These beaching dollies come off. The beaching gear comes off. Give you a multitude of color schedules and liveries of this the kit gives you. That's what I like. A lot of extra decals left over too, so which I'm gonna save in the box that I can use for future builds. Right now I'm filling the fuselage, I'm in sanding. I had a really tight, tight fit there. It fit pretty tight across here. And I just had some filler there anyway. Just making sure it's smooth. I got to gloss in the interior with an airbrush. Add some varnish in there so I can put the, uh, the control panel. The instrument panel. And then and paint the headrest. And that's pretty well done. Then I'm going to go ahead and start masking off the transparencies and install saying I have to get all the painting done on it. I just got to finish. I got to paint this black up here. Then I'll go ahead and mask my cockpit, put it in here, and mask off the observation uh, canopy back here, too. Get that all done and check for uh, imperfections by priming it. I'm going to use light gray primer on this. I'm not going to use no black base painting on it. To me, black basing is just an easy way out of uh, pre shading. I like that pre shading better for all those panel lines. It means that's an authenticity of the real thing. This kit's very pricey. I think I paid $70 for this airplane. I bought this at Smitty's Hobby Shop. I must have been about maybe three, four years ago when I bought this. Another thing of caution. That bracing between the sponsons goes up to the fuselage, the tax bracing. Be very, very careful. That is fragile. And that's possible. You don't take much. You hit something like that, it'll pop, it'll snap. And it's brittle, too. So if you run into, if you run into trouble, I would say I only broke one. And I 
got it in there really good, and I took some took some uh, to me extra thin right here. See it lids on there, and just brush out a, a, a liberal amount of glue on there for it to seal it, and it seemed like it's pretty good. If you do bust this out, get yourself 34 unwound music wires, still guitar string, guitar string, and make your own. So that's very fragile right there. There's no rigging at all, saying except the radio mass and stuff. It's a pretty good size airplane, it's about the size of my of my uh, Jake, Iachi I-13 Jake float plane. I did a build video of that, and I still got that damn little squirt. That's a beautiful airplane, paper model I made. Got the flap wells all painted, so I'm gonna mask those off. The landing flaps are optional, either up or down, so I'm gonna leave mine down. I got a kink for flaps. I love them. Makes everybody look cool. Look, look really cool. No fit issues at all. When we put the interior parts in here, you start closing up the fuselage, button up that fuselage. Be very careful because once you get it in there, you, you it's very tight. You see, all those interior parts are pushing up against the the shells of the fuselage has, and uh, so they will close up by pinching it. You got to add a lot of pressure. And like me, I don't like using uh, uh, fast glues like ACC. I like glues, so I had to. I put a. I always take a little bit of that, and that a soda pop uh, cup right there. I take a butt of a toothpick and dabble in there and put it on. That's what I did on this. I dabble on some of that uh, ACC on top of there and pinch it closed off. Beautiful. Went over some sandpaper, sand it off, add a little filler there. Goes together good. There's a few ejectors, a few pin marks right there where the floats go at right there. I had to sand all that out. So this airplane ain't ready to be painted yet. I gotta more or less I gotta go out and uh, do a lot of Sanding here and there, check things out, see if it's okay before I do any uh, uh, painting, planning. I got pretty much down, there's just one piece, I just got to do a little sanding around here. Panel lines here are all recessed panel lines. They're good panel lines. Yeah, looks pretty good. That's nice. I'm happy. I'm just checking areas I missed with that sand, sanding stick. After I sand this thing down, before I prime it, I got my buffing sticks here. Here's a buffing stick right here. Take up some scratches right there. You go across a panel line, you can describe it in. Nothing right home here about. Okay. I caught my eye right there. It's smooth and it's fixed, so that's much I got done on this thing. So, on the next video, I'll present the canopies to be on, to be all masked off, and be all primed, ready for the. Uh, the finished paint schedule, which is going to be intermediate blue and light gray. This will be the Kingfisher out the USS Arizona. Okay, that'll be.
it for me for tonight in videos. I'm videoed out now. I got my three in for the day. <laughs> okay, that's what's on the bench. Of course, I was parked around at Lancaster over there at my Tamiya kit. I'll probably be working on that to finish this Kingfisher. I've been checking out some parts on the thing. I see if I need more sanding on it. I guess I got everything sanded on it, so I'm going to go ahead and mess up those windows inside there and that's the con canopy and the all the turrets and everything get them all done and, and get ready for painting and prime it and paint it that was a free kit got right there I think I told you the story about that on, on the pea shooter video that back 1970 uh, yeah 1978 Marcher's Hobby World, I sent away for it and I got it. And that wing was like, woo, oh, ditzy doodle. I said, I can't have that. And I said, oh my God. I said, how in the hell did it pass quality control? And they had quality control in those days. All the inspectors on quality control left a little tag right there. The name on it, their, their, their number, everything. They don't do that nowadays. They just think, Put it in the computer, type in, bat, and it comes down the table, the guy bags it, throws it in there, and that's it. Now take your money. Yeah, I got that. I wasn't very happy and that wing was all twisted. I said, Bob, I said, you know I don't complain. It's not your fault. This must have been happened at, at the plant. Ozuka, Japan. And he goes, I said, you got a wing problem, don't you? How do you know? He says, I got another call from a guy. A guy just called me a while ago about it. Now, you, you're the second one's call. I better check these kits out. I got three in stock right now. He said, I'm going to check all three right now and get back with you in a few minutes. He says, what's your phone number? I gave him my phone number. He went back, called me back up. He says, Frank, this is Bob Archer from Bob Archer's Hobby World. Hey, how you doing, Bob? And he says, what's the skinny? He goes, I checked those three kits. I got Twisted Wings, too. How the hell did they, did they get by quality control? I can't out. It was something purposely done, and they didn't care. And that's not the style of Japanese people. They, they're very proud and prideful people. I mean, they wouldn't do something like that. I said, well, you got one. This gentleman got one, and I got three in stocks got them, so... I'm getting on the horn and get back with him. He said, what's your address? It says, I gave him my address and got back at me. Then, a week later, I get a letter from Tamiya Modeling Company. It says, dear customer, we value your business. Says, We're very, so truly sorry about your, your Lancaster. We had complaints and we, we had problems with... Uh, with the with the quality control, because they, they they had trainees there working trying to train them, and I guess they went by that guy or something like that. And the head inspector who was watching over him didn't see he was doing a good job or not. So, I imagine he got chastised or or got the axe or got sacked. But anyway, what they did to me is a week later after I got that letter. They don't have UPS trucks back in those days. They had um, mail carriers. They had a mail truck came up. They had a big old box about like so, I don't know, about about, about three foot, big old huge box. I said, God damn, I didn't order nothing. And I got thinking about that Lancaster. Oh, I thought that's a Lancaster he's got. Well, when I came back, they gave me the wing. It was straight. It was all fixed. Then they gave me a new kit. And it said, our compliments. Thank you very much for your service, for your business. I've never been so happy in life. I went and called Bob Archer here. Bob, I just got my Lancaster stuff back. He said, you get a free kit? <laughs> yeah, how do you know these things? I'm a business. I know these things. Says it, that last customer, I called before you did. He got his free kit, and he just got a hold of me, too. Man, what a coincidence. Small world, no air. Anyway, that's how I ended up with that one. Okay, I'll take the next video of this. I should have probably uh, by this weekend, probably. 
But right now I'm working on my Corsair. And get that make hay way in there. Yeah, talking about the Corsair. I forgot to mention on the video about the details. I think one of my uh, commenters mentioned about uh, how long was the group bill going to be. It's going to be six months. Six months. That gave you enough time to finish up other group bills you got involved with. Or just build something on your own for a while. They don't take no six months to build a Corsair. And the Corsair is, like I, like I mentioned on, on the uh, introduction of my Tamiya kit, is that they could be any scale, any company. 172nd scale, 148th scale, 132nd scale. Can be, can be, can be even the Gwillow's balsa wood kit, the big huge one they got. Or it could be that one that big. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, any scale, guys. Six months. That's long enough to get your get that finished up and finish up the other group bills. That way, it's 30 days. That's a lot of work. Some guys takes a long time to build, like me. Oh, it takes me a long time to build one of these things. Like that buffalo I showed you. That took me about, well, I know about two weeks working on it every day almost. And that, that kick be put together in a matter of minutes. But I always like to take my time on it. That way, get your money's worth. Okay. Oh, yeah. But here's the engine that goes to, uh, to my Kingfisher. It's like so in there like that. And the cowlings are removable so you can see the engine. That's pretty neat. But you got to make sure it's dry fitted and it fits good. And make sure everything fits well before you uh, before you um, glue anything down or okay that's it for the Kingfisher that's it for me it's time for you to go to bed man how the hell I had that thing set a while ago like that yeah that's all said that's a pretty airplane. Get done with it. Okay, it's time to get out of here, guys. Don't get tired. Okay, this is Frankie Day from Frankie Day Model signing off. Always take care of Mama. Take care of the little ones. Stay focused when you drive, and to be aware of your surroundings and take care of yourself. And put mask on your face when you go out in public. Don't get sick. Like I said, this virus ain't going away too soon. It's it's like rock and roll. It's there to stay. So, take care of yourselves. Next video would be, um, well, probably be another up. Well, I got two on the bench right now. I got my course there, and the OS2U is going to be either one of them or both. And I might drag something else out of the closet. You don't know what I'll do. Okay, I'm out of here, fellas. Time for you to hit the full fart sack and gotta go to work in the morning like everybody else does. We got to toil and make our money so we can buy plastic and take care of our families. Okay, this is Frankie Day again, signing off. Dick, guys, take care of yourselves. God bless you, fellas. We'll catch you next video.